guys? It's your boy, Barca Boy 103. Today we're gonna to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Firstly, an hour ago, as I'm recording this video, Adama Traore was presented as a new Barcelona player. He, of course, had his press conference as well, which pretty much was just you know an Ousmane Dembele recap. But again, new number 11 at Barcelona, and also Pierre Emerick Aubameyang has been officially announced as a new Barcelona player as well. Our new number 25. But at the club right now, there's a big problem. Firstly, in the boardroom with the Usman Dembele situation. The Barcelona board, Rafael Uste, Raporta, Mateo Aleman, Jordi Cruyff, all want Usman Dembele to be frozen out for the rest of the season and are looking at ways to terminate his contract. But Xavi said if you can't do that, he wants to play Usman Dembele. If we're going to end up paying him, let's play him. He'll be a helpful, you know, asset to the team. So right now there is a battle in the boardroom of what to do with Usman Dembele. And also the squad list for the Europa League. UEFA only allowed three new signings. And of course, Barcelona made four signings. There will be a player from those new signings who will be excluded from the squad list. And we have that answer in the video. It's also in the title as well. So you pretty much know who it is. And lastly, we have an update on the forensic investigation of Bartomeu for the Artur Piano swap deal. Sales and Neto swap deal, Malcolm deal, and also some big news has come out about the Antoine Griezmann deal as well. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 300 likes video. Be very much appreciated. And also make sure you hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. And let's get into it. Let's start off with the presentation and the press comments reaction of Adama Traore. He was officially presented like literally half an hour ago as I'm recording this video, and also had the press conference as well. New number 11 at Barcelona. So let's get in the press conference. Pretty much just an Usman Dembele recap situation. Press conference, poor Adama couldn't speak. He barely spoke in this time, and though this, you know the whole entire day is supposed to be about him. But anyways, let's get into the press conference and see what everyone had to say. Firstly, Juan Laporta off by saying that welcome Adama. You were born here, you trained here, and then you had to make a professional career abroad, and now you're back so you can enjoy Barcelona, and Barcelona can enjoy your talent again. I thank Adama for taking the club situation into account and making a great effort. Of course, rumored Adama right now is on. On 350k for the six month loan which is unbelievable so credit to him Adama said I have been away from my home for seven years now do everything possible to make the fans happy with me I've always been from Barcelona now we're growing and what I'm here to do is help the team and reach the team's goals for the season now we get into the Usman Dembele recap situation Laporta was asked about Usman Dembele he said whether or not Usman Dembele returns to playing for Barcelona it depends on the coach he's saying that Xavi will decide whether or not Usman Dembele plays again this season or will be sent to the stands for the rest of the season. He said it seems Dembele has an agreement with another club. He has not wanted to renew here. So he's saying, look, Dembele does not want to stay. We didn't renew his contract and now it's up to the coach whether or not we should play him or not. And then Jordi Cruyff stepped in. It was not Mateo Aleman. We'll know about that why in a few seconds. Of course, Jordi Cruyff is a divisor of Juan Laporta. He said an attempt was made to reach an agreement with Usman Dembele, but sometimes it can be. He is training like all the others. At the moment, he is considered one more player for the team. The one who will decide is Xavi, thinking about the present and, of course, the future of Barcelona. Back to Laporta, a player who does not want to renew with Barcelona. He knows why he does not want to renew, but that has to have consequences. We want players with commitment, as Adama has shown today with his, of course, wage reduction, all that sort of stuff. Back to Jordi Cruyff, we have given Xavi more attacking options. This is, of course, January transfer window with three new forwards who can dribble and score goals. So pretty much quick recap on, this, on that section. Laporta is saying, look, we want players who want to play for Barcelona. Dembele will not be a player here by June. He will be leaving for free. He hasn't agreed with another club. Bada bing, bada boom. Jordi Cruyff is saying, look, Around, you know, November, uh, December time, we had no attacking options. That's why Dembele was important. But now during this window, we signed three wingers and one number nine, one looking to play on the wings of number nine and Aubameyang. So now he has more options. So they're saying, look, we brought in these three players so you can freeze out Usman Dembele. So right now we don't really need Usman Dembele. So this is Juan Laporta and Jordi Cruyff putting pressure on Xavi to not pick Usman Dembele 100%. So we'll wait and see what happens with that. Back to Dom Traore. He was asked whether or not he'll be registered for the Europa League. He said this will be decided by Xavi, but we do have the answer to that. Stay tuned for the video. Back to Juan Laporta. I want to highlight the work of Mateo Aleman during the window and how he's worked around the current circumstances at Barcelona. Aleman couldn't be here today due to personal problems with his family. So Aleman, I, I, really, I just want to give him a hug, man. Oh, I just want to just... Uh, what world class, world class during this window, and by far Juan Laporta's best signing for Barcelona. 
Now, back to Ousmane Dembele and with Juan Laporta still, our renewal proposal for Ousmane Dembele expired on December the 20th. If they wanted to sit down to negotiate, it could have happened, but now they don't want to talk to us anymore at this time. He gave us the understanding that he was very grateful with the offer, but a similar situation happened last summer, of course, with Ilash Mariba, and in the end, we found a solution, but right now, we have not found a solution with Ousmane Dembele. We always understand Ousmane when he said he was not respectful by the media, for example, the club always supported him. Him. We always want to give him confidence to extend him so he can see, you know, prove all the, you know, media haters wrong and everyone, all the coolies wrong as well. The coach wanted the same as well. And of course, we are very disappointed. Now, back to Jordi Cruyff. It was difficult to find key players in the winter market. I think he was asked about why we didn't bring in a left back. We did part of important things and sign important and fast players. I think we strengthened the part that we needed to strengthen the most and part that we couldn't. But now, starting today, we will begin planning for the summer transfer window. Back to Juan Laporta about Adamas Traore's buy option. He said that we will decide whether or not to execute Adamas buy option in June. It's not mandatory, but of course, we want to. So he's saying, look, as of this current moment, we do want to keep Adama beyond his low move. The question is, how will we do it? Watch out for Trinkau Adama swap deal. I am calling it right now, February 2nd. I think that could be a very, very big possibility. So keep your eyes on that. Back to Adama Traore. He was asked about his position in the team. He's going to play a right wing back, right back, right wing. He said, I have not played as a fullback in my entire career, although I have played as a wing back. As a winger is my main position. And Chabi has been training me and telling me to play on the wings as of right now. So... We'll wait and see on that. I think we can definitely see him at right wing back at some point this season. And lastly, Juan Laporta was asked about the Dembele Mbappe connection. How he said that Dembele is better than Mbappe. So I keep thinking about this, but it's up there with Mbappe. I don't regret having said that, but because we are convinced of the talent that we have with Usman Dembele, and that's why we made him a fantastic offer to stay at Barcelona. So that concludes the press conference. Overall, just all about Dembele, how Barcelona right now. Very, very mad at him and the board right now, Juan Laporta, Jordi Croy, Mateo Aleman are pushing Xavi not to play Dembele for the rest of the season. We'll talk about that more near the end of the video, but Adama is here. Right now, Barcelona are planning to, you know, buy him in the summer. The question is how, money, or again, my theory, Trincao, Adama Traore swap deal. Overall, new number 11 is at Barcelona and hopefully he'll be successful. Let's now get into the news surrounding Barcelona over the past 24 hours. Firstly, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is officially a new Barcelona player. The club released this like an hour before the presentation of press conference of Adama. But you know, I think that's a bit rude on him. And of course, during his presentation, all about Dembele. It's supposed to be Adama Traore day. But anyways, Mbappe, new Barcelona player. In the official statement, Barcelona said that Barcelona have signed Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang on a free deal. Of course, Arsenal yesterday confirmed the determination of his contract by mutual consent. And apparently, Arsenal paid 8 million euros to Aubameyang to cancel that contract. Here's the big part though, the player will sign the contract until June the 30th, 2025 with an option to agree departure on June the 30th, 2023 and his buyout clause is set at 100 million euros. So contract technically until June 2023, well, till to June 2025, but we can break that contract on June 2023 and he'll leave, he'll get paid off during that sense. So technically on paper, it's a four year deal, but he can leave next summer. So pretty much Aubameyang will be here for the rest of this season and also the following season as well. So it looks like he'll be the backup option to Erling Haaland if we do end up getting him. Now also Xavi Novato from ARA came out saying that Barcelona have kept an option to terminate his contract of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang if he indulges himself in any act of in discipline so of course the reason why he left arsenal because he wasn't training he's was getting out you know going out for tattoos instead of you know coming to games if that happens here at barcelona we have the option to terminate his contract and he won't get paid whatsoever so pretty much he has to behave at barcelona very good clause there by juan laporta and lastly from juan marti from sport He's come out saying it will be very difficult for Aubameyang to continue beyond 2023. At that time, the club can terminate his contract by paying him the remainder of his salary. With this formula, his salary will be more distributed and therefore less impact on the wage bill. So of course, contract until June 2025, we can cut that short until 2023. But from 2023 to 2025, he still has to get paid and that will be, you know, in installments pretty much. So we'll see what happens with Alba. He's a new Barcelona player. His uh, presentation has not been confirmed. It will either be tomorrow, Friday or Monday. Monday, of course, Saturday press conference with Xavi, Sunday Atletico Madrid game, so it won't be on the weekend, it'll either be tomorrow, Friday, or Monday, I think, I think it will be Friday, but 
we'll wait and see but Aubameyang new Barcelona player and of course our new number 25. Now of course with Barcelona making four new signings in the January transfer window unfortunately one of them cannot play in the Europa League and Xavi has now made that decision because of course the deadline is today midnight they have to let the you know UEFA know who will not be registered we have made that decision and to be honest I am very very surprised and it will be Danny Alves. Firstly, Luz Rojo from Marca broke the news so credit to him. He said this you know oh, I think what 48 hours ago so big up to him. He came out saying that Danny Alves will not be registered for the Europa League and this morning everyone came out saying the same thing having Miguel, Gerard Romero, Danny Alves will be left out of the Europa League. What do you, what do you think about that? Let me know down below. I think it should have been one of the attackers. I think. I think we're going into the Europa League with Des Mingueta and Jordi Alba as our three fullbacks, pretty much. So it's going to be tough. I think I think I would have went with... Ah, man, it's such a difficult thing. I think I would have went with a Bamiyang or a Dama. I think Ferran Torres 100% guaranteed. I think Adama, I think the reason why Chavi let, you know, let Denny Alves out of the squad is because he's going to use Adama Traore as a wingback. Maybe go with a 3-4-3, 3-5-2 against Napoli. I think that's why, and of course, in the attacking for, you know, forward line, we're a bit short. We do have some cover at fullback. You have Des Mingueta, Jordi Alba, Alejandro Balde. Up front, you pretty much have Luke De Jong and Ferran Torres. So you kind of need those extra attackers. And of course, Adama can go to wing back if needs be. But that's the decision from Xavi and the board. They have decided to leave out Denny Alves out of the Europa League squad, which pretty much means he'll play every single La Liga game from now until the end of the season. Because, of course, he'll get that, you know, full week off every single time. Let me know about your thoughts about the decision down below. For me personally, I'll back it. But again, I think it's, you know, a bit of a dodgy decision. But you know what? At the end of the day, it is what it is. And Denny Alves will not be playing in the Europa League for Barcelona. Let's now discuss an update on the situation of Ousmane Dembele at Barcelona. What I want to do is go through the reports that come out through the media and then discuss my opinion on the whole entire situation. Now keep in mind all these reports came out before the press conference this morning. So, you know, keep that in mind. Anyways, Juan Martí came out saying that Barcelona did not want to play Usman Dembele anymore. He will not continue at Barcelona at the end of the season and the club is even exploring ways to terminate his contract. Having Miguel from AES came out saying there are two offers of Dembele, given the leather freedom which he has rejected by now or terminate his contract. It is clear that Barcelona did not want to play him anymore, but Xavi is not in favor of sending him to the stands, so they want an exit right now the Barcelona board. Coutrone came out saying that Xavi will try to convince the board to let Usman Dembele play for the remainder of the season. Aleman is totally opposed to Chavi's idea and Laporta will have to find a way for the best solution for the club. Luis Rojo from Marca came out saying that Dembele has rejected the letter of freedom at Barcelona that he was offered before the transfer window closes. This is not the way he wants to leave the club. His idea is to fulfill his contract and leave for free in the summer. Juan Martí again came out saying that in the club there are people who are in favor of Usman Dembele's contract termination. He would have to pay the rest of his contract but it means a goodbye right now. In the club, there are rumors, well not in the club, there are quotes coming out from the club saying we will not save anything, but at least we can lose sight of him. So, I mean, my god. Fernando Porto of Mundo Portivo came out saying that Barcelona are clear about Dembele, will not play for the club again. However, they have to analyze and agree on the decision for the coach, who does not want this to affect the group. Laporta, Rafael Uste, Mateo Aleman, and Xavi will meet today to make a decision. Also, Barcelona are very angry with Usman Dembele's agent. The club in terms of the situation has been dragged despite the good offers to renew. More, however, they also don't agree to leave in January as they want to leave as a free agent. So, the board want Dembele out right now. They don't want to see him in a Barcelona shirt training whatsoever again. Xavi, he's saying, you know what? If you can't get rid of him, I want to play him. So, Xavi's like... He's in favor of getting rid of Dembele, but he does not want to send him to the stands. He does not want to have Dembele in that squad list number seven. You know what I mean? So, Chavi's saying, look, if he's staying, we're going to pay him. Let's play him. Who cares? The board is saying, no, it's a matter of principle. This guy spat in our face. We gave him the best contract renewal offer we could. And he said, no, didn't leave, yada, yada, yada. What are your thoughts? For me, I'm in favor of the board. Get this rat out of the club because, you know, if you just look at the numbers, Juan Marti again came out saying that counting the transfer fee and salary of Dembele, Barcelona have paid investment. <clears throat> Barcelona have invested a minimum of 180 million euros in Ousmane Dembele to this day. Of course, some variables, 5.7 million. Each minute he played costs, you know, 23,000. And of course, each game costs 1.4 million. 
He's cost the club a lot, and that's what Juan Laporta said in the press conference this morning as well. He's saying, look, we've done everything. We, you know, showed our commitment. We showed we backed him. I said in the media, he's better than Mbappe. And still, he did not want to renew. He came to us and said, I want to renew. We offered him a good contract. He said, yes, yes, yes. Last second, he said, no, I want more money. That's a problem with the club. So, I'm going to back the club. But, of course, I understand Chavi. Chavi's saying, look, if he's going to stay, let's play him. He's only going to be an asset to the club. Help us get top four, maybe even win the Europa League. But, you know, to attack Chabi, I would say, look, you're acting like Uzman Dembele is messy here. He, he's good. He's, he, he's fast, decent dribbling. His shooting is atrocious and his passing is atrocious. He's not, Chabi's acting like, oh, this is like, I don't know, a Neymar. He can, you know, have a great impact on the team. Then you go back to Jordi Scroif in the press conference. Why do we bring in Ab Aubameyang? Why do we bring in Ferran Torres? Why do we bring in Adama? You can see both sides to it, but again, I'm, I just hope they can find a, like an answer in the next week. I don't want this to drag on for like the next few weeks. I just hope they can find an answer as soon as possible. We'll wait and see, but let me know down in the comments below. Are you on team board or are you on team Chavi? I'm on team board, but I can understand team Chavi. But then again, like I just said, Chavi's acting like Dembele is, you know, messy for crying out loud. He's not that good. Yeah, he can make an impact here and there. He's been in the club for five years and I've only seen six good games. I can remember off the top of my head. That's it. So... It is what it is. We'll have to wait and see. Is a renewal possible? I would say no, but I hope the club can terminate his contract. We're going to pay him anyway. Just pay him now. Get him the hell out of here, but we'll see what the club decide. But again, Usman Dembele is causing an internal battle in the Barcelona boardroom between Juan Laporta and Mateo Aleman, and also between the management of Barcelona, Xavi, and his brother, Oscar Hernandez. Now, the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is give you guys an update on the forensic investigation that's going on at Barcelona for the previous board of Josep Maria Bartomeu. Firstly, coming in from Sport, they've come out saying the transfers of Antoine Griezmann and Malcolm is under investigation. In Griezmann's case, a batch of four compensation is highly suspect, commissioned to the player's father, sister, family lawyer, and another lawyer as well who helped the transfer to Bartomeu's Barcelona. So, uh, this boggles my mind. Griezmann had a release clause. We don't have to negotiate anything. So you're telling me you paid family lawyer, another lawyer, father and sister, money and also paid the release clause as well and then gave him a fat contract as well my freaking god Mundo Deportivo came out saying it said that Barcelona paid 15 million euros to other clubs for having first refusal on some players it was actually done to prevent the club from opening a case versus Barcelona and the player there was evidence and also not it hasn't been said yet or anything like that but it was Atletico Madrid in Griezmann. Now, if you do remember the summer we activated Griezmann release clause, we talked to Griezmann behind the board, Atletico Madrid's board back. He was not happy. He said, I'm going to go to court because, of course, you can't talk to a player without the, you know, the club's permission. So, Bartomeu said, okay, I'll pay you 15 million euros for the right for first refusal for Saul, Jimenez, and Koke, but I won't actually go for the players if you know what I mean. The guy's like, all right, all right, all right. This freaking scumbag paid the release clause of Griezmann, his father, sister, family lawyer, another lawyer, and also paid the president of Atletico Madrid to keep his mouth shut. I, I think Griezmann cost Barcelona like 200 million. If you include wages as, wages as well, we're looking at 200 million here at least for Antoine Griezmann alone. My freaking God. Mundo Portivo also came out saying that everything indicates that the Silas and Neto, Artur, Piano swap deals are included in the lawsuit which Barcelona have filed to the prosecutor's office against Bartomeu. This involves the crimes of false accounting. Now, of course, we all know about these swap deals. We had paid money for there and back just to cover up the books. And now these are being under investigation for the you know, forensic investigation. And lastly, Kutrone came out saying that Bartomeu right now is not worried about the results of Barcelona's investigation. He considers that Laporta has not presented anything new or that the previous administration was hiding. Oh, I really hope this man rots in jail. Again, the club don't care if he goes to jail. They just want that money back that he's, you know, that he was messing around with. They don't care if he goes to jail or not. They just want that money back. I guess I can understand that, but I want him to suffer. I mean, it's... I'm spe I don't even know what to say. I'm speechless. What Bartomeu has done to this club is a freaking joke. Like, I mean, you have Adama Traore on 350000 for six months because this man screwed over a club. And it's that plain and simple. We've been, you know, maneuvering the club for the past year and a half. And I, I just want to, you know, give a round of applause for Juan Laporte and his board. They have been given Mission Impossible and they've done a great job in improving the squad, bringing in some reinforcements, selling some players as well. We saw Coutinho score a goal for Brazil. Hopefully, Aston Villa by Coutinho, man. And we're going to hope for, you know, Trading Cow to be sold. Griezmann will 100% be sold at this point. So, the club are doing the best to fix Bartomeu's mistakes. 
but his mistakes have cost the club greatly and hopefully and hopefully 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 justice will be served so that was my reaction to the barcelona news over the past 24 hours hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discuss may they honor firstly are you team board are you team Chavi for the uzman dembele situation secondly danny Alves being excluded from the europa league squad what are your thoughts about that you think it's the right choice or should it have been you know a batman and triori or fernand torres and lastly on the Bartomeu situation, you think Bartomeu will pay for his crimes at Barcelona? And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca. Barca, Barca, Barca.